Everybody, it's Tyler here at Western New England checking in with 177 Bobcat Robotics. Phenomenal performance just a couple weeks ago at Hartford, taking the win there, and we'll be talking about their robot here today. Some cool changes we'll be talking about for 177 going into this event, and as we start to look at this robot, we'll be going all the way through that note journey, and they're doing so much in regards to uh, different detections on the field, vocalization as well, too, that we'll be covering. So let's learn more about Bobcat Robotics coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Well, let's start out from bottom up, talk about the uh, intake. You're doing a couple really cool things that we want to highlight on there, so walk me through what you have, how you came up with it, and let's start talking more about it. Yeah, so we actually iterated this intake a bunch of times before the season actually started. We went through, and once we saw the game, we really decided on, like, four different designs, and we went through and tested all of them, and this one ended up working the best. Um, it's one of my favorite parts of the robot, actually, because we have... Um, uh, mechnum wheels in the bottom here on this um, front roller which helps um, guide the note into our shooter and um, as you can see there is all the mechnum wheels and then here we have um, just plates that are 3D printed to kind of again guide that note in there. Um, we did um, change a couple things about our robot like um, the trap mechanism, we used to have it so that the roller would actually change directions and pop a note up. We called it our Pop-Tart. Um, but since we removed the trap, we had a motor that wasn't being used to, for anything anymore. So we, re, um, we redid the motor so that it would run with the intake for the rest of the time and it would then make our, our our intake faster. So what made you want to choose to remove the trap mechanism? So after Hartford, we went through our uh, list of priorities and then we did so kind of decided that in order to complete and like fix the things that we wanted to that were higher on the priorities list the trap kind of had to come off and that helped us in a lot of different ways we were able to focus more on our um, autos and stay more like just it was helpful because it made us more consistent overall. Andrew, let's talk about this uh, thing called a spivot on your robot. Yeah. We're going to have to describe a little bit more uh, what that is. You know, teams always got different colloquialism for what their robots are, but talk to me about what the spivot is and why it's been so successful on your team. Yeah, so a spivot is um, our shooter pivot, which is a key part of our robot as it allows us to really aim from anywhere and score from anywhere on the field. And it's, it's important that this stays a, as precise a mechanism as possible due to the nature of how the uh, speaker is designed so we did that by using a cam to create tension on the chain that is that moves the shooter um, to, by separating the shafts which keeps it as tight as possible at all time and eliminates as much backlash and like slop as possible okay and you got a couple different positions uh, for this as well I know we'll be talking more about the programming in a little bit but from mechanical side can you break it down for me yeah, so it uses a motor with like that goes through one of like a, almost like a custom gearbox that will move a chain over here that goes around the that goes around a sprocket which changes the angle. It's very precise. We we even have an encoder on this a direct encoder on the shaft that keeps the that keeps our uh, that keeps us informed with exact percentage or like exact uh, degrees angle. And it's very important as even a one or uh, one or even a half a degree shift could cause a, a note to miss. And I'll be diving more into that programming in a little bit as well too. But talk to me about this uh, shooter wheel configuration that you have. You know, when I talk to other teams, some are just running only wheels on one side. Some are more even about shaved down wheels. You're running a very interesting configure of having two completely different size wheels. Yeah. So. As we prototyped and developed our shooter, we realized that having similar sized wheels would cause very little spin on it, on a note, and that would cause it to uh, flip over or tilt when it was in the air, just not creating a nice uh, flight path of it. And 
this meant that longer distance shots were difficult and not as consistent. So we added larger wheels on one side to create to create more grip on that side and to really spin it. And an interesting part of that is the the smaller wheels on that side really don't touch the note and, and propel it. All of the momentum comes from the larger wheels and the smaller wheels are just guide the note out and keeps it smooth uh, and flat uh, shot. Well, I think in a little bit we got to bring a note in, but let's talk about this uh, amp uh, combination here, Willow, as well, too, and uh, how this all works together. And then, yeah, let's definitely bring a note in to showcase how this all works. Yeah, so um, a big part of our robot this year is that we wanted to be a goat under the stage, um, and that led to some problems based on, like, we had all these priorities, like I said before, and uh, we had to fit all of them into this small, confined space. So what we did was we utilized the fact that we had a shooter motor already, and we made this, um, can you... <laughs> we made this part coaxial, and our entire this um, roller here actually spins with our shooter rollers. So everything is connected only by this these belts and this shaft here on the bottom. Um, it's kind of cool because we wanted to make sure that all of our components were kind of separate. We wanted a really consistent and robust like robot this year, and um, by adding this, it was like. It was kind of a simple solution to a more of a complex situation. So yeah, it's one of a, a really cool part of it. Well, let's showcase off. Talk to me about uh, how it works. And if you can narrate just a little bit what's happening too, that'd be great. Yeah, um, I think actually, yeah. So our intake automatically stops once we get to this point in the robot. So it goes to a perfect position into the robot to then we have our spin up and uh, the note just goes through the robot. Um, you wanna just... So this doesn't actually like curve it down at all. It helps um, just propel it and then it like stops it from going out once it's in the amp. So it works better when there's like the amp there, but yeah, you get the idea. When you were analyzing uh, the Crescendo game, what made you think about like having all this combined in one? Like in regards to like your objectives, that sort of thing, yeah. where did that come up? Yeah, um, so like like I said, we have a priorities list, and I guess the, the main priority, of course, is like in the beginning of the season, you want to drive. You want to be able to uh, move, and we kind of, based off of that, we were like, okay, well, we want to be able to shoot in the speaker. Um, we want to be able to climb. We want to be able to do all these things. So um, like we said, our trap mechanism kind of got the boot, but that's because we had all these higher priority items that we wanted to showcase and then like make better overall. Well, there's a lot more that goes in this robot on the software side as well. So, Adita, tell me more about uh, what you're uh, using in regards to software and how you're getting uh, all the different either localizations, object detections. There's so much that goes into this. So, talk to me more about uh, what you're doing and uh, let's uh, display a little bit of how that works. All right. So, uh, first thing is we have this limelight over here. For um, we have a run a custom trained um, neural network here. We trained it with over 11,000 images that we captured of a note in various lighting situations, um, cut off notes and stuff like that to make sure that we can actually really detect that note. And what it does is that we use a little bit of trigonometry to uh, figure out the x distance to the note, the y distance to the note, and the angle to the note, so that our driver basically just has to press a button, and then the robot will go there and take the note all automatically. And then if you come here, the next part of the, our vision system are these two limelights over here and here. What these are for is these are to track the April tags. Um, we have two for stereo vision, and what we do is we use pose estimation with these, and um, we find the angle to the speaker April tag with each of these limelights and average that from our calculated value from our pose estimation so we can actually get the holonomic angle here while we can, so we can strafe while actually uh, blocking the rotation onto the speaker. Looking at, uh, once again, from an objective standpoint, was that something that when the game came out, you're like, hey, this is something that's a must do, or was it a nice to have, or where did that come up in regards to your objective process? For our auto alignment, that was pretty much a must have for us, because we looked at the game, saw that, um, okay, we're gonna have to be able to make these really consistent speaker shots, and because of the nature of the speaker, it's actually pretty hard to find a good spot to align and shoot consistently from various uh, positions on the field. So uh, the only real solution there was using the April tags and some form of pose estimation to actually use auto align. Do your drivers get any sort of feedback on that during the match? 
Yes. We have um, shuffleboard um, on our driver station and um, we have various entities to figure out if we have a note, if it's aligned. Uh, we also have rumble on the operator controller to um, uh, direct the operator if the note is actually ready to shoot. By the way, as, a, as an old-time boomer, this is an awesome controller. I just want to say that. Like, yeah, definitely. Love it. That's super cool on there. So, uh, Anything else that you, that you want to cover? I know we have a few other things that we're going to cover software-wise as well. Yeah, so um, yeah, that was for the holonomic angle. And we also use a uh, hash map that we created for getting this pivot angle. So we use um, the distance between our uh, calculated pose and the known location of the speaker um, to get the hypotenuse and find the distance so that we can accurately move that pivot to the exact um, angle that we need to be at so we can actually hit that chop perfectly. And then winding up on this robot here, uh, there's a bunch of different sensors on the robot, Devin, that I know we want to cover on that. Uh, and anything else software-wise that you want to add in as well, too? Yeah, so for our sensors on the robot, we have multiple sensors in our intake. We have a photoelectric sensor right here the, that is stops the note when it's in position. And we have, as a backup, a time-of-flight sensor right here. Uh, we found the photoelectric sensor to be more reliable, so we're mostly using that at this competition. It allows us to perfectly stage a note every single time, which helps us with our shooter consistency. Um, some additional software features, uh, as Aditya mentioned, we have uh, pose estimation, and we use that pose estimation uh, to shoot while moving. Uh, this was our biggest feature, the thing that I'm most proud of this year. We use our pose estimation uh, as well in combination of our velocity on the field, the position of the speaker and the velocity that we fire the notes out to calculate both the desired angle and rotation of the swerve drivetrain to always make notes no matter how fast we're moving. Uh, something that we didn't have in previous shooting games that we really wanted to add this year to help speed up our cycles. Uh, some additional things with swerve drive, uh, we have closed loop rotation on our entire chassis. So if we are for some reason stopped, uh, to align to a note, uh, to align to the speaker, uh, we will automatically resist any attempt to knock us out of that rotation. So it helps us kind of automatically play defense against our opponents. Well, 177, what a phenomenal machine. Thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about it. I think there's a lot that teams can learn from this, so we can't wait to see uh, how your performance is here as well as Western New England as you look for a second win. So good luck, and uh, can't wait to see how you also do a DCMP. Take care. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.